for listening to the episode with my guest, Rachel Katz. I'm Travia Stewart, and I want to help you move past barriers and obstacles that are preventing you from getting what you want in life. This is Breakthrough. Today on the Breakthrough Podcast, my guest is a nutritional scientist, a wellness embodiment coach, a yoga teacher, and the founder of her brand, her very own brand, The Full Life. She helps her clients heal on a mind, body, and soul level so that they can embody true wellness and have a healthier relationship with themselves, with others, with their bodies, with food. Every area of their life improves once they improve the relationship with themselves. So on the podcast today, we discuss Rachel's journey from basically curing her own mental issues. Today on the podcast, we dove into Rachel's breakthrough story that began in 2013 and to how she came out on the other side being the person she is today. Rachel lets us in on what it felt like to not love herself, what it felt like to have toxic toxic relationships, to be in a toxic relationship. And then she leaves us with some really, really great tips that if you are someone in a place that you, you don't wanna be, where you feel like you're not loving yourself on a high level, you can follow Rachel's tips today and begin increasing and working on that today. So join us now, keep listening, as we dive in and have a conversation with Rachel Katz. So in 2013, it was my first year of college and I was really, really struggling with my relationship with myself. I had debilitating OCD, anxiety, depression. I was trying to heal from my eating disorder. So I was on a healing journey, but I still, um, I still wasn't recovered. And I was still trying to figure out how to heal that relationship with food and with my body. And I desperately wanted to be in a relationship. Um, I was only 18 at the time, but I was like, my world is going to end if I am not in a relationship right in this very moment. (laughs) Um, I just really wanted love, you know, and connection. And I didn't know how to get there because I really didn't love myself. And I was just so lost. Um, I thought, so my whole life, I thought I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be in the music industry. But the more I started to get older and just struggle with these areas of anxiety and depression, I was like, I don't know if that industry is right for me as much as I love music. I don't know if I want to deal with everything that comes with that. Um, So I kind of was lost when it came to my purpose. I was just lost um, and really did not love myself and was really, really struggling. And that's when I decided that I wanted to heal myself naturally. I've always been really um, an advocate for natural healing. I, you know, I know medication works for a lot of people and that's awesome. But personally for me, I knew that that wasn't the best option for me and I didn't want to go that route. So I was committed to doing whatever it took to healing all of these mental health issues naturally. Um, So I really went on this deep dive into my healing journey. I started paying attention to the foods that I was eating and what those foods consisted of. And I took my first nutrition class in a community college and I fell in love. And that's when I was like, wow, I didn't even know that you could be a nutritionist, but this is what I want to do. So I changed my major to nutrition science. I started to go to yoga and really fall in love with yoga and meditation. And later on, after I graduated, I became a yoga teacher too. Um, And I just really delved into the world of health and wellness. Um, 
But during this time, because I was still really struggling with my relationship with myself, I got into a really toxic, abusive relationship. Um, and I was with this person for five years and all the way till I graduated college, pretty much. Um, so we were together throughout that whole time. And it wasn't until we broke up and I kind of broke free from that, that my journey really started. So <laughs> I'm saying that it's a long journey um, because it took me a while to get there, but I feel like my journey really, really started when I broke up with this toxic person, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so um, even though I dove really deep into health and wellness, I still um, I, I still became like obsessed with it to the point that wasn't healthy. Um, so it wasn't until I broke up with this person and I dove deeper into my spiritual side and I went into more of a spiritual journey into healing my relationship with myself and understanding why did I attract this toxic person into my life? Why did I put up with it for so long? Um, why did I have so many toxic friendships? Why did I not feel happy on my own? and always looking outside of me to find things to make me happy. Um, so it wasn't until I really delved deeper into that that I really healed and my relationship with food changed, my relationship with my body changed. And I really started to find that perfect balance between you know, nourishing my body, moving my body, but in ways that weren't obsessive and ways that really, really came from a place of self-love. Um, and it wasn't, um, and like during that time too, I was committed, committed to just healing my relationship with myself to the point where I felt happy on my own, where I didn't feel like I needed anybody else. And that was one of the best times in my life. I always look back at that time with so much love and joy because um, it's just so nice to get to a place where you're happy on your own. Mm -hmm. and to spend time with yourself. And I did so many things to rebuild that relationship with myself. Um, and then, you know, I was happy with myself. I felt full on my own. And from that place, I was able to attract the relationship that I'm in now that's super healthy and stable and fulfilling. And um, I'm now living in my purpose, doing what it is that I love. I have a healthy relationship with all of my friends. You know, I was able to get rid of all of the relationships that were toxic and no longer serving me. I learned about boundaries and setting boundaries. Um, and my life is just filled with so much joy now. It's filled with everything that I've ever wanted. And even though it took a while to get here, I'm, I'm so grateful for everything that led me to where I am now. And yeah. Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So, you know, you, you covered so much. Thank you for telling it very beautifully. Yeah. And so, you know, when I, when I think about um, people are in toxic relationships and are like, you know, this guy, they generally begin to blame other people, right? They blame others, mm -hmm. you know, but you were adamant about healing your relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me, can you speak to the difference between, you know, and, and maybe it was his fault, I don't know, but mm -hmm. it felt like it was an inner journey for you more than it was that guy's fault. Can you speak to that a little more? Totally. So I will say that, you know, because I was in a very, very abusive situation, mentally, mm. physically, spiritually, in every sense, he was abusive. Um, so I do want to say that if you're in an abusive relationship, it's not your fault that that person is abusive. But um, the accountability that I took was from the perspective of why did I stay in that situation? Mm. Why did I let myself put up with that? Um, why was I so enamored and in love with somebody that was treating me that way? That says more about me and what I think I'm worthy of and how much I love myself, you know, um, for me to even want to be in that relationship. So even though the way that he acted toward me wasn't my fault, it was my, my fault that I 
stayed in there for that mm. long, as long as I did, if that makes right. sense. Why do you think you stayed so long? You know, because sometimes it's people look back and go, oh my God, I, you know, the signs, the, the, the red flags were there, you know, <laughs> from date number three. What do you think it was about you that you couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel for leaving the relationship sooner? Yeah, I mean, a part of it is that, you know, narcissistic and abusive people are really good manipulators. So mm -hmm. they will tear you down to the point where you feel like you're nothing without them. And it is a really, really hard cycle to break. Yeah. So I will say that if you're in this cycle, you have to have compassion for yourself because mm -hmm. it's just, it's one of the hardest things to break. And I feel like mm -hmm. if you get out of that cycle you can literally make it through anything in life um but so I will say that a big part of it was that was he broke me down to the point where I felt like if this person doesn't love me nobody will ever love me like I'm mm. not about this person wow. um, but when I look back on how I felt about myself when I met this person in the first place mm -hmm. uh, I didn't love myself at all. I didn't think that I was worthy of love. Um, I thought very little of myself. I had very low confidence, very low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So even though I, you know, recognized red flags here and there, um, I almost didn't want to believe them because I just wanted to be loved. So, yeah, I'm you going know, to take whatever came with that love. Exactly. Wow. So I know that you are a yoga instructor, you are um, a wellness, you know, you're, um, what is it? Uh, the embodiment uh, coach. <laughs> good night. I was going to say wellness embodiment, but uh, yes, you are a wellness embodiment coach. And so yeah. I know like for me, I didn't find, you know, as we call it our niche, mm -hmm. I didn't find that specialty until I recognize, oh, I'm really, really, I'm really good at this thing, right? Which I feel like that's what you found by taking the nutrition class, right? And so when we talk about like, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I'm in my purpose. You know, most people would be like, how do you find that? Do you feel like your purpose was waiting for you through that nutrition course? You know, what were the, the signs inside you knew that you kind of had made it home with that? Yeah, um, that's such a good question, because I think so many people are struggling to find their purpose. And actually, um, during one of my yoga classes, when I was training to be a yoga teacher, a teacher there said something that really stood out with me forever. And she was like, you know, we think that our purpose is what we do. So like, for example, um, my purpose is to be a yoga teacher or a nutritionist, but if you view your purpose as something bigger. So for example, for me, I feel like my purpose is just to bring love to the world and show mm -hmm. people, you know, how to love themselves. So the means in which you do that can change, you know, maybe in 10 years, I'm like, actually, I don't really want to be a wellness coach anymore. I want to be a singer or I want to be a poet or whatever it is like yeah. that can change but the basis of what it is that you want to make people feel and the impact that you want to make on this world, I think that's really what matters. That's so good. I'm totally with you with that because when I think about my purpose, so I was a high school teacher for 24 years. And mm -hmm. then I was, you know, I, 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 my purpose was introduced to me when I was in fifth grade, right? And then, mm -hmm. and so it just evolves. The vehicle that, that you use to fulfill that purpose can change, but ultimately that purpose, like you said, bringing love to the world. I love that. That's so good. So let's say someone's listening to this episode right now and they are in a place of, you know, they don't really love themselves. And I know self-love, there's lots of books and lots of things. What is the Rachel Katz way of, if you are here in this place, what are the three things that you would say, do this, start here, do that. This is what it looks like. Yeah, so I think number one is to spend time with yourself and to genuinely just spend time with you. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean watching TV, scrolling on Instagram, um, you know, talking on the phone with friends. I think we're all just so distracted by 
constant stimulation from outside of us. So we don't really take the time to just be with ourselves. Um, so when I was beginning my journey, I went on so many hikes. I think that really like saved me. It was just being in nature mm -hmm. and not listening to music, not listening to a podcast and just really being with myself and my thoughts and getting to know myself um, outside of all of this crazy world. Um, yeah. So I think just spending time with yourself is so important, taking yourself out on dates, doing things alone, even if it terrifies you at first, just going for it. it and it gets easier and easier and easier with time. Um, yeah. So that would be number one. Um, number two, I think it's really important to, just like with any other relationship, to start to build trust within yourself because if you don't trust yourself you can't have that healthy relationship just like if you're with a partner and you don't trust them that relationship isn't going to work um so you know when most people hear this they're like oh i trust myself like what do you mean um yeah but but it's as simple as, for example, if you're like, I want to start getting more fit, I want to go to the gym three times a week, and you put that in your calendar every single week, you're like, I'm going to go to the gym, and you just never do it, you never yeah. fulfill those promises that you make to yourself, it's going to be really hard to trust yourself. Um, so I would start off with just like one promise to yourself a week, like, this week, I am going to try a new yoga class, or I'm going to go on a new hike, or mm -hmm. I'm going to take myself on a date, like just one thing a week. And actually following through with that is going to help rebuild that trust with yourself. It's going to help you feel safe within yourself. Um, so I would say that that's number two, um, is rebuilding that trust. And then number three, for me, like literally this is what saved me when I was in that dark place, um, was having some sort of connection to something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all view God in a different light. So I think just having some sort of spiritual connection with whatever resonates with you is really, really important because then you notice that, you know, no matter what, like there's always somebody out there that is protecting you, guiding you, taking yeah. care of you. And once you find that love within that, you know, for me, I'm a big believer in God and that connection like has saved my life countless times. So yeah. just believing that there is something, someone out there that loves me and is guiding me and yeah. has big plans for me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Those are three great things. And especially uh, the first one you said, that's the one that I've been working on the most. I mean, totally, you know, in love with who I am, in love with myself. But, you know, I recognize I wasn't necessarily enjoying, like, without the TV on, like the presence of myself without the TV on, without the radio, without listening to something, without having something in my ear, even on the walk, when I'd walk my dog and be like, what podcast can I listen to, you know? And so once I was like, I was talking to another friend and she was like, you know, and I was like, well, you know, I think I'm going to start doing, you know, five minutes of silence. She goes, 20 is a sweet spot. I was like, girl, 20 minutes, what am I going to do in the 20 minutes, you know? And so that's when it comes up, Rachel, right? Mm -hmm. All those thoughts, it's like, oh, the chatter. How do we kill the chatter? Oh my God. And listening to the chatter, right? <laughs> Right. So, so I'm totally with you there. So I would love to talk about your, your, when you had friends and you felt like those relationships were toxic, because I feel like, you know, we all, we've all heard the quote that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. What was the process of you going, okay, I need to up level. I've got to peel back these people and get rid of the, you know, because how do you do that? Because we go, that's my friend. And I know she's been through some things that, you know, how did you do that? Honestly, it's as simple as I got to the place where I loved myself and loved my own company that I truly didn't need anybody to mm -hmm. fulfill that need. Um, and I think that's when you get to a place where it's almost effortless to get rid of those relationships, whether it's friendships or 
romantic partners, it just becomes so easy because um, you just look at life differently. Your outlook is different and the way that you view yourself is different. Um, so it's almost like they literally are just not in alignment anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, don't get me wrong. I don't just cut someone off out of like one right. thing that I don't like, because that's not healthy either. You don't want to just go cutting people off left yeah. and right. Um, but when I just started to notice, like, they weren't respecting my boundaries anymore, I would mm -hmm. clearly communicate like, hey, you know, this is a boundary of mine. Um, and if you just continue to not respect my boundary and make me feel bad for having boundaries, mm. then that is when I'm like, mm, I don't really think we're on the same page and this isn't yeah. really going to work for me anymore. <laughs> That's so good. Right. Because we can have boundaries, but if we don't have the consequence, if you cross that boundary, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, it's like, I have boundaries. I, it, here's where I draw the line. But if you never do anything and uphold that, like be integral to your word, then that boundary is no good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So your purpose, bringing love to the world. Tell me how that looks in your life today. Like, you know, when people are like, these are my top values. And it's like, and whenever I work with my clients, I always go, you know, you, your highest priority values come first if they're your values. So if people were like, you know, you never had this conversation because I'm sure, you know, you don't talk about your values with everybody that you cross paths with. But if people were looking, you know, inside of your house with the roof off and are like, what is it that they're witnessing as far as you living into your purpose and, you know, living through your highest priority values? How do you, Rachel, show love, give love to the world? Yeah, um, it's a really good question. I think just by making sure that I'm in alignment and that I'm taking care of myself on a mind, body, and soul level so that mm -hmm. I can show up as my best self, I think just... I think it's so powerful to take care of yourself first, love yourself first, so then you can show up as your best for others. Because if you're not in alignment, you don't feel like your best self, you don't feel good, you're not going to be able to give that to the world and to other people. And it's really not selfish, because by doing that, you're setting an example for everybody else to do that for themselves too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just like, I really embody what it is that I stand for. Um, you know, I, I really, really am an embodiment of, of self-love and of giving love to other people and just encouraging people to go after what it is that they want to be doing with their life. Um, yeah. yeah. That sounds so good. I'm not sure if you, uh, and I know this episode will come out much later than the Academy Award Awards. Did you watch the Oscars last night? So I, um, something that I had to, this is a boundary that I had to set for myself like this year is I've actually, um, so I like muted every single person I follow on social media. So I don't really see stuff that I normally would see, but my boyfriend did show me like what happened because yes. I know all over social media. So yes, I did. I did. Okay. And the only reason, the only reason I bring it up is because, you know, because you just said, I am the embodiment of love. Well, you know, Will Smith got up there, which I totally admire Will Smith, not in what he did, because I thought that was just tragic, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But he's like, I want to be a vessel, a river for love. And, and I was like, <laughs> you know, and so when people say those things and then they, like, oh, but I just, I flipped. I mean, I'm not saying that anybody's perfect, but yeah. what what were what was your internal monologue when your boyfriend shared that with you? Honestly, I thought it was a joke. I was like, this can't be real. Yeah. I thought it was weird that like there were no consequences. Like he didn't get thrown out. Like right. I don't know. It was just so weird to me. I thought um, what's his name? Chris Rock is his Chris name. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought he handled it very gracefully. Mm -hmm. Like the way he handled that was beautiful um, right. <laughs> um but honestly yeah I I don't know I think um I think it's hard for anyone to comment on you know their perspective because being a celebrity I feel like none of us can even 
conceptualize right. what that's like and the pressure and you know what they have to go through um but again he clearly is not putting himself first he's not taking care of himself so mm. he ends up being on somebody else yeah 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 the thing that just got me the most was that he wanted to be a vessel for love and I was like do you <laughs> so <laughs> that came up yeah so <laughs> so Rachel talk about the work that you do right now with your clients like you know I know that you wanted to heal yourself holistically when you were going through all of all, all of your inner demons and your, your the mental health and and so most people are like no, I'm going to go to a doctor. I'm going to, you know, the doctor's going to prescribe this medication for me. And that's what I'm doing. Why did you want to heal naturally? And how do you help your clients heal naturally? Yeah. Um, when people ask me why I knew that I wanted to heal naturally, I honestly don't know. It was just something like intuitive that was just in me. And I was like, mm. I can't um, a big part of it was I was on birth control for a few years and I started to notice my mental health declining. I just had all these crazy symptoms and I went to doctor after doctor and they all said the same thing like no your symptoms are not from birth control like it's not the birth control you're fine. But I just intuitively I was like something doesn't feel right and I made the decision to go off of birth control. And literally the second that I went off birth control, my symptoms reversed. It was crazy. Wow. And that's when I was like, okay, there's something to this. My intuition is trying to tell me something. I know that medications come with so many side effects and they don't actually heal the root issue. They just, you know, put a Band-Aid on it. Um, right. So... I just knew that I, you know, if I just put a Band-Aid on my mental health issues, I was never going to heal the root issue of why they were even there in the first place. Um, so that's what I do with my clients. I work with clients on so many different issues. Um, I work with clients who have eating disorders. I work with clients who have hormonal issues, hormonal imbalances. Um, clients who just are not confident in their purpose. They don't have boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. They don't love themselves. They're not going after the life that they love. So it really varies so greatly, but honestly, the root, the root cause is always the same. And we really just have to dig deeper into the root cause of why, why, mm -hmm. why, why, um, yeah. instead of just putting band-aids on everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. So can you, as we begin to wrap up, can you share with my audience and with me some of the great things that you have coming up right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I am hosting a free three-day group challenge. Um, it's going to be April 19th to the 21st. It's going to be um, in, my, uh, in my, sorry, in my Facebook group that I will share the link with you so you can share it with the audience. Um, you can go to bit.ly, so bit.ly slash capital heal with Rachel for all of the info on that. And then shortly after that, I'm gonna be launching my eight week long group transformational program. Um, it's called Aligned. And by the end of the program, the goal is for you to be aligned with your mind, body, and soul so that you can show up as the most aligned version of yourself. Um, so yeah, and then I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. So that's really my focus is working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, that sounds so good. So to be aligned with your, your, your mind, your body, and your spirit. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's really, really good. So perfect. So are there any last wisdom drop some gems any last thing that you're like I really want to say this thing to just drop the mic there Ooh, that's a good, <laughs> you have so good questions today <laughs> um I think just just don't settle if you're just comfortable right now with your life if you're like I'm comfortable like 
this is probably enough. I'm just going to settle for comfortable, like never settle. Yeah. Each and every one of you can have the life that you so deeply desire. And those desires were put there by God for a reason in your heart mm. and they're meant to be fulfilled. So just go after everything that it is that you want. It's all out there. You know, people come into your life for a very specific reason. I feel like you and I have a lot in common and you just spoke to my purpose, you know, oh. because my purpose is to empower and inspire as many people as I can to live the highest vision for their lives without settling. I love that so How much. About, you <laughs> see, look at this. Look at what we're doing. We're dancing. Wow. So when Rachel. You're, when you're aligned, you just meet those people that are in yeah. alignment. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Absolutely. So Rachel, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. I will drop all of your information in the show notes and I'll make sure that we blast it out that, you know, you have this group program that, well, you have a challenge, three-day challenge, April 19th through the 21st. And then shortly after that, we're going to look for Rachel Katz, a line group program that's going to run for eight weeks. I love it. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for listening and being a valuable member of the Brick Through Podcast. If you have a question or anything that you'd love for me to tackle, something that you feel like I would be an authority on and you'd love my take on that, I would love for you to shoot me an email at travia at traviasteward.com. And I would love to compile a list of questions and turn those lists of questions into an episode because it's my goal, it's my objective to serve you more powerfully. So I wanna help do that in the way that you want me to. So have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, I would love it if you could leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. So thank you, have a good day, peace.